All right, awesome. Trade ya. Whew, this one's super fun. So there's like this huge, huge, huge festival they have like once a year apparently. And at this festival, um, Twilight has to come so that she can be like the mediator. Um, since she's like the princess, um, they, they need like somebody to stand up and, and to tell people uh, kind of like she has to rule over all the traits. Um, but <laughs> besides that giant banner of, you know, her face, um, the rest of her friends are there, right? And they're all, and they're all, you know, there uh, to trade. So they have like booths, um, and then behind the booths are people, and they're, you know, they've got their goods, and, you know, a lot of people are just walking around, and they're trading things, right? So just like bartering for, you know, whatever they want, kind of like a big outdoor mall, super cool event um, for these guys to go to market and, and just trade stuff, right? Um, so Rainbow Dash comes and she really, really wants to find like this this last copy of uh, their new book. It's like hardcover, first edition, signed, all that good stuff. Um, and then all the other friends are coming too, right? And so like Applejack wants to go. Okay, so here's a cool one, right? So Applejack goes with Rarity and um, and they decide to pool their their funds, right? So they pool their funds and. Basically, they say, um, hey, let's go share our stuff and we'll get whatever we want. And so, Rarity goes to the stall and finds like a brooch that she really wants. And Applejack goes to the stall and she finds a pan that she really wants. And the good news is that the brooch only costs all the bits that they both have. And the pan only costs all the bits that they have. And so, oh my god. And so, Rarity's like so confused by this pan because Applejack has like so many pans and Applejack is ridiculously confused by the brooch because it looks the exact same as the brooch that she's like wearing right now um, but you know Applejack's insistent that this is a different pan and it heats it faster and blah 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 and Rarity's insistent that this is a different brooch and it looks different and blah 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 and so they're both like ridiculously passionate about the items that they found right and they, they really really like you know, want them, right? Um, but they can't buy them on their own. They have to, they have to try and save their money uh, together. And so, like, there's this huge argument. And it's like, well, what do you do? You know, but this is question. You know, like, who's the better friend? Am I the better friend if I if I get this, or if I give uh, you know the money to you to get this um, for your thing that I don't think makes a lot of whole damn sense? Um, and so they have like the whole back and forth, huge, huge, huge argument. And like they're radically transparent, and they both know what each other want. They just can't really see each other in the same light or agree with each other um, because they don't understand their perspective, right? It's it's like they can't see the difference in the two pins. They can't see the difference in the two pots or the pans. It's just it just doesn't uh, register. And so they, they go back and forth and back and forth. And they realize that like it doesn't really matter. You know, they care. They have care. They do care, but they can't care that much. Um, and as it goes on and on and on and on, like trying to figure out who's going to be a better friend, who's going to give the other person their money, and eventually they, they just get sick of it and they quit and they, they just walk away from it. They leave. And they do something that's so powerful. They go out and they take their money their own separate ways. They stop sharing money. Rarity buys Applejack a pan and Applejack buys Rarity a brooch. They know what they want because they've been transparent and so because of that and because of the strength of their friendship they go out there and they spend their money on something for the other person as a gift how powerful is that how cool is that they get it done and it's not like you know what they wanted originally but it means so much more because what applejack buys is a pain that looks exactly like one she already has and Rarity buys a pan that looks exactly like one Applejack already has. So they look through the eyes of the other person and they say, what would this other friend want? And as soon as they identify that, they just pull the trigger and make it happen for the other person, which is so, 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 so powerful. Um, and that's like the first huge, huge, huge thing from this episode is, you know, buying things that the other person wants and, and also being able to overcome you know, difficulties in trade or, or tough, you know, situations. You just gotta walk away from a lot of things. That's powerful. And they have that ability, which is the coolest thing ever. Now here's the other part, I and mean, this is kind of a little bit more serious. Um, 
So very much, she really wants this book, right? She really, really wants this book. And this one person has the book, and to get the book, um, she wants to trade for like some huge like animal thing. And so this animal is like over here, and so she goes over to the guy that has the animal and says, "Hey, can I have this animal?" And then he's like, "No, but I wanted this like chicken lamp thing." And so it goes, you know, she goes to the next guy and she says, "Hey, can I get this lamp?" And he's like, "No, but I want this." you know, burger or something. And she's like, oh, well, let me go get you a burger. Um, and so they go through this whole, like, daisy chain of, like, you know, getting people crap. Um, and go through this huge, huge, huge adventure that basically takes up, like, the whole day um, to get this lady, you know, this, this animal that she wants. And so she gets the animal, walks over, uh, and says, hey, I got you your animal. Let's trade. You can, you can give, me your, give me the book, right? She really wants the book. Um, and now she's like, no, at the end of the day, you know, I've been watching this thing all day. Um, and Fluttershy, you know, she's been helping Rainbow Dash the whole day to go through this whole chain of bartering crap just to get it uh, to this woman. And so she's put everything she has into this exchange. And now all of a sudden, at the last minute, something's changed. She's pulled out and says she doesn't want the animal because she's been watching it all day and it looks like a wild beast. Um, and so, but like, Rainbow Dash is just crushed. And so she. You know, she says, look, well, well, come on, are you serious? Come on. Um, and then the lady says she'll train, but Fluttershy has to come with her and train her. Fluttershy can train the animal, but it's going to take like eight freaking months. It can take forever. Um, and Fluttershy is, is so unassertive at, at this point that Rainbow Jack literally trades her friend away for this book and says, you bet, you got it. Here's Fluttershy, here's the animal, um, give me the book. She sacrifices her friend's time, her friend's life, and their whole relationship so that she can get this one freaking book. Um, now, what is this? Well, let me tell you what this is. It's just another example of taking an immediate benefit and immediate joy with a sacrifice of a long-term friend, right? Just destroy it, gone. And that's a terrible, terrible, terrible decision and a shameful thing to do. And so, like, it's just so, so, so messed up. Um, and so, you know, Rarity sees this, Pinkie Pie sees this, and they're like, dude, are you serious? You can't freaking do that. Rainbow Dash says, yeah, you know what? It was stupid. Shouldn't have started this, shouldn't have done this, you're right. I understand. Mistake. I realized this was insane. Um, and you guys, you know, let's go see if we can do this. So, so they go to Twilight, and then when they go to Twilight, Twilight comes and she has like this big hammer and she's like basically like, you know, a court judge or something. And she she says, look, you know what, this is bogus. Um, you have to reverse this trade uh, because you can't just like take somebody as part of a trade. And so she undoes all of it and they go home happy and, and, and reunite with Fluttershy uh, because you just can't trade away your friends. You know, it's just, it's not like an object, right? Which is just insane. Um, and so two like really interesting situations in here that reveal a lot about like the underlying psychology um, of, of exchanges, especially in the marketplace where you know you're not necessarily taking your friendship and, and using it as, as a leverage tool. Um, you're using it more like a problem solving tool. And it's more of like a resource to be used, not a resource uh, to be to be traded, right? It's like this idea of, of a golden goose. You know, you, you, you spend all this time building out these quality relationships, these quality masterminds, quality friendships. Um, and then and then you just harvest from it over time and you keep using it over time and it's worth so 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 much but you can't just like you know kill the golden goose you can't just give away the golden goose sell the golden goose um, because it's only worth as much as, as like you put work into it you put effort into it and you let it prosper and grow over time um, and that's exactly what needs to happen here for Rainbow Dash and she, she, she gets it now um, thanks to this experience and one last thing uh, that happens here is like Twilight um, he tries to sell all of like Twilight's books, um, and she realizes it's just a little side note, but like she realizes that you know these books that she spent you know literally years reading, like hundreds of books, um, you know that have literally made her who she is as a person today. Like her whole you know foundation, you know from going to like total you know loser to be like the princess of a friendship, came like standing on top of of these books, and she realizes that like. Books are so important to her that it would make like literally no sense um, to berate herself of them. And so, just like another testament to like the power of literature and like quality reading, um, that can actually get you up to the goals that you desire. Um, and it just that was that was a cool little note too. Also, is that Twilight 
like she thought she wanted to sell her books, but then she realized that she had like an emotional connection with them. And so because of that, she just um, she kept them all, which was super cool. So um, cool little thing about like keeping books and how they fundamentally change who you are and allow you to go from any state at the moment to like huge, huge, huge amounts of success in the future, which is like awesome. I thought that was so cool. Um, so yeah. Okay, sweet. So inspiration, manifestation. So this is uh, this is an interesting one. So we've got Rarity, okay, and Rarity. She is looking, you know, for gems like normal, and she's going out into the rock fields or wherever. I'm gonna find some gems. She stumbles into like a, like a cave, and in this cave, she finds this this book. Um, and it's like this magic book on like a magical shelf. And so she takes her like magical book uh, home and when she gets home she like opens up the book and it's like magic and then all of a sudden like this like green magic starts to encompass her, her body and her face and uh, like all of her personality, right? And so like her whole like, being um, starts to sort of filter around like this green magic that starts to take over her life. And it's basically like green for greed, right? It's, it's really, really interesting. So her personality starts to degrade, degrade, and degrade, and get broken down into like teeny fragmented chunks. Um, it just it just crushes uh, her individuality, which is just, it's really messed up. And so like what happens is she goes around all over the place and she just says like, you know, I wish this would be like this or something like that. And like she'll like turn the world around her into like gold, which is like insane. And so she'll just like use this book as a tool to turn like the whole world, like everything that she sees, it just gets turned into gold and it gets encrusted in diamonds and all these, these beautiful, beautiful uh, things. And you know it's, it's like insanely like awesome. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of like destroying the world around her, right? Like this idea of Midas, uh, Midas' touch, like she's crushing everything that she wants, right? And she walks through the streets and the streets become gold and the whole town is, she, like, she, she, so she zooms out and she, she steps away uh, from the whole town and she says, hey, what's going on here? You know, how, what, what can I do more than where I'm at right now? She's overcome uh, by like sort of the evil magic in this in this book, uh, which is it's awful. So she takes a step back and she says, "Okay, well, what's going on?" And she like looks at the whole town and like turns the entire town into like gold, which is, is insane. Um, so everything changes uh, for her and for her environment. And kind of more importantly, right, is this idea of she's just like crushed the whole world around her and of that, she's essentially like gone power crazy and lust crazy with this book that is like fundamentally crushed who she is as a person and instead overpowered her being and overpowered her personality into, you know, being greedy and destructive and just an awful, awful, awful place to be. So Spike, you know, she sees this happening and he follows Rarity around while she's, you know, turning everything into gold and kind of destroying a lot of people's like things. And as this goes on and on and on, what he realizes is that something's gotta happen. Um, and it's gotta happen from inside of Rarity, right? Like he can't force her to, to stop. Um, you know, like a whole bucket of, of force, it just would not impact her whatsoever. It's gotta come from inside. She needs to make the internal decision to go back to where she was and to change to uh, her original self. Um, because she thinks right now that this is beautiful and she's doing an amazing job and Spike is reinforcing her and supporting what she's doing because he doesn't really understand that she's like controlled by dark magic at, at the beginning. And so because of that, he lets her do this and he says, okay, good job, looks beautiful, you know, gold everywhere. He is sort of you know, lying to himself and lying to her. And because of that, you know, destructive lying, you know, lack of transparency. Uh, and more specifically, just like total bogus on his part, what it does is it sort of destroys the foundations of this relationship and it hurts, you know, Rarity more than anybody else because she's just getting fed lies that she wants to hear instead of getting told 
what a real friend would do. And what a real friend would do is actually expose the truth and show exactly what is going on. For Spike, you know, it's very, very clear that this book and this new evil or this new magic is a legitimate issue. Um, and it's a serious threat to so, so, so many people. I mean, it's destroying the livelihood of these citizens and the world around them and turning everything into gold. Yet, Spike keeps supporting her because he cares about her. And there's this, cool, there's this deep relationship between the two. But he realizes that something's got to change. You know, she can't just change the entire world into gold to fit this twisted evil vision. And so, because of that, you know, he, he, he steps back and says, okay, I gotta do something here. So he looks into the book and he looks into uh, the spell that's been cast over her on accident as she discovered it. And he realizes that he needs to tell her the truth. If he tells her the truth, then he should be good and it should reverse the effects of the spell. So, like every single time Rarity turns like something into gold, she'll ask him, you know, oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he's trying to be nice, he's trying to be gentle. And he's, he's trying to be supportive, right? And say, oh, it looks great, that's beautiful. Um, this is something that like is so important because especially when you meet new people, you know, they'll do things that are like kind of questionable. But there's this idea of, you know, do you want to get on their good side or do you want to get on their bad side? If you want to get on their good side, you should probably support what they're doing, especially if you don't know them very well. Yet here it's the exact opposite, right? Um, she, he needs to speak the truth because only by speaking the truth. Excuse me. Will he ever release her from this curse that she's in? So they're standing on top of this hillside, and they're looking down at the town. And, and Rarity says, "Oh, isn't this beautiful, Spike?" And Spike has to muster up like every ounce of courage in his body, in his blood, um, to come up and stand up and say, "Look, Rarity, this is not okay. This is bad. This is not beautiful. This is not good." This is evil. This is <laughs> this is hurting people, and you need to stop it. Rarity takes that in. She listens. She says, "Okay." She processes it, and then what's really cool is the spell breaks. The spell breaks when a true friend gives an honest truth, which is exactly what happened here. He told her exactly what was going on, what really needed to happen, and as soon as he was transparent. And a hundred percent legitimate and serious about the effects she was having on the world around her and the changes that she needed to make and the impact that she wanted, all of a sudden, this spell fades away. Similarly, this gold, the gold rose, they all fade away. The greed fades away. She goes back to normality, she goes back to truth, she goes back to where she needs to be in her own world, where she's passionate and caring about not only like herself, uh, but more importantly, you know, how she interacts with other people. She doesn't want to hurt other people. She doesn't want to destroy the property of theirs. And she doesn't want this hatred. She gets rid of all of that and focuses instead exclusively on her ability to simply be in coexistence and live the peaceful life she's always lived. Not this evil, twisted, destructive world uh, that just flashed in a pan and came to her so, so, so quickly when she found this like magic destructive book. And now instead, she can use her personal thoughts, her oversights, and her true interior personality to go and live that whole life that she's been living for so long. But she can do it at a whole new level of clarity and decision because she knows she must stick to those core foundational principles that give you everything you desire. As soon as you deviate, you can destroy it. So you want to be slow to really change like your character and make sure it works well. <laughs>